Great. So now that we are recording, um, I want to welcome everybody. Uh, so we are going to be recording this uh, and sending it out for review for those of you uh, who could not make tonight's training. Uh, and for those of you who are here who would like this for reference. Um, so we will be sending that link out later uh, tomorrow morning and you will have it uh, then. So I apologize for starting the recording a little bit into the program. So if you're joining us on the recording, welcome to our training. Uh, but tonight we are going to spend 60 minutes together about um, divided into four key sections. Uh, for the first part of the evening, we will go through the mechanisms of a virtual NHD contest. Uh, we know this is the first time for us it's a virtual contest and perhaps for many of you as well. So we wanted to make sure we reviewed what that process looks like. Um, so then we'll answer questions such as what are the categories? What does the virtual contest website look like? What do evaluations look like and who fills them out? So the next part of the evening, we will look uh, at the different rounds of judging. Thirdly, we will uh, explain what to expect when you join us on Zoom again for your individual judging nights. And lastly, we will spend time looking at how to fill out an evaluation form so that students can benefit. I will leave plenty of time for questions uh, at the end of the call. And again, if you think of any throughout, feel free to put them in the chat. If you're watching this as a recording, uh, I am always reachable by email uh, and my email will be up on a slide at the end. Uh, so feel free to reach out that way as well. Uh, you will notice in tonight's PowerPoint, uh, there are images of students and judges meeting in person. Uh, unfortunately, this year, everything has been modified uh, for a virtual contest from the way students submit their work to the ways you provide them feedback. Uh, so what you will be seeing in the images are uh, image photos from past contests uh, and not of what to expect for this year. So I just wanted to, to let you know that we will not be meeting in person this year, um, but we thought the pictures were too good to pass up. So you will see those. Uh, so to start, I just want to thank everybody for volunteering this year. Uh, we know this year will be different, uh, and we are so grateful for your flexibility and dedication to our first ever Bucksmont Regional Virtual Contest. Uh, whether it is continued support uh, or new support this year, we could not do this without our judges. Uh, so thank you. You are all crucial for making National History Day a success. So to get started, we're going to dive right into judging logistics. Uh, so here we're going to talk about how work is passed, student work is passed through the National History Day process. Um, we're going to begin with the idea of what is National History Day uh, and its purpose and how that becomes a fully fledged uh, student project that all of you will judge in the end. Uh, afterwards, we'll review the procedures of what your judging roles are going to look like. So, what is National History Day? National History Day is a highly regarded academic program for elementary and secondary students. NHD itself began in April 1974 uh, on the campus of Pace Western Reserve University uh, in Ohio. The idea was the brainchild of history professor David Van Tassel. Uh, who was worried about the decline of humanities and history in particular in American schools. Today, it's a nationwide uh, competition for students in grades six through 12 and is very similar to the science fair format. There are hundreds of students on the regional, state and national level of NHD across the country uh, doing historical research and digging into historical events to create their projects. We are thrilled to see how excited they are about history. National History Day gets students out of the classroom and into the world as historians. They are doing research, tracking down information about historic people and events. This research leads them to craft a thesis and build original conclusions shared through different projects. Students have the choice to create either a paper, a website, documentary, performance, or exhibit to communicate their historical argument and research. NHD itself, as a program, supports and reinforces critical writing, reading, and research skills for students. The contest progression for National History Day in general starts on the school level. 
many schools participate in school-wide contests that then promote their students to the next level, which is regional, which is where we are at. Uh, it's sometimes part of the curriculum for schools, um, but other times it's voluntary. So you'll see a different mix of that when you see that. So as you notice, as we go from school to national, the arrow gets smaller, indicating that fewer students make it through each round. So we are a regional contest, as I said, uh, and the winners from our competition will move on to the state level, and then from there, hopefully the national level. Uh, just as a note, both the Pennsylvania State Contest and the National Contest will also be held virtually this year. Though most of the entries you judge uh, at our competition will not move on to the next level, it is our goal to provide students with a positive and memorable experience that will encourage them to keep learning and reaching higher. I mentioned already the different categories and you will be assigned to judge a cert in a certain category. You should have received those already by email, uh, but as a review, the five categories are papers, websites, documentaries, performances, and exhibits. The paper category is an individual only category, meaning students cannot submit papers as groups. For the other four categories, submissions can be either in individuals or in groups of two to five students. Each category is also divided into the junior and senior divisions. Junior is sixth through eighth grades and senior is ninth through 12th grades. So as an example, the documentary category will be divided into junior individuals, junior groups, senior individuals, and senior groups. Students will be judged based on those subcategories within that breakdown. Students are all given the same annual theme. Uh, the, uh, the national office sets, selects a theme each year that students at every level of competition have to use to guide their research. This year's theme is communication in history, the key to understanding. The theme asks students to consider how people exchanged information and how they interacted with each other. Students have the chance to explore how the methods and modes of communication have changed over time and how they have shaped the present. Major inventions like the telephone, the telegraph, and the television stand out in our minds as obvious examples of how communication has changed over time, yet communication is more than just these inventions. It is about how words, thoughts, or ideas are exchanged throughout history. Students should be explaining their topic's relation to the theme and its significance in history in their projects. The annual theme is broad on purpose, and we ask that judges keep an open mind uh, about all the projects they're reviewing. You might personally like, be excited about, or maybe be tired of seeing a certain project topic but remember to consistently and fairly judge each student's project, uh, regardless of personal feelings. So the life cycle of a student's project is generally September through June. As I mentioned previously, some schools incorporate NHD into their curriculum and students will begin talking about their projects with teachers and mentors and then choose what they want to do. They'll start the research process in September and their project could extend all the way to June uh, if they continue on to the state level from here and then the national level uh, of competition. So after choosing their own topic, students will do historical research, build a thesis and analyze their sources. Their projects are not just book reports, uh, students analyze the information and come up with their own conclusions and historical arguments. This is all in the process of creating an entry, and then they move on to presenting it at the competition, which this year will be virtual. So you will see the virtual submissions of these students' work. Uh, you are part of that process. You are there to give them feedback and to help rank the projects and decide which students move on to the state competition. If they're moving on, your feedback uh, is helpful for them to tweak their projects and make them better for the next level. And if they don't move on, uh, it's still very helpful if they continue the following year and continue learning about research and the critical analysis process. 
You've seen the category breakdown a few times uh, and you I have said you've all received your category assignments and we'll be judging in one of these five categories. And I do just want to note uh, that certain categories do lend themselves uh, to the virtual realm very naturally. Uh, and from our preliminary observations, exhibits may have been the most challenging to uh, translate virtually. Uh, so if you have been an exhibits judge in the past, uh, we do ask that you kindly keep that in mind. Uh, so let's get into the process of what of actually judging these projects. As I mentioned before, all judges work in uh, judging teams of two or three uh, with one judge captain on each team. If you are a judge captain, you have been notified already, uh, and your only responsibility this year is to click the buttons at the end of your judging night to submit student rankings. A judge team must reach consensus and agree upon all of the entries that they are ranking um, by the end of that evening. This year, as I've said, is virtual. Uh, there will not be one full day of competition where all students, teachers, and judges gather to view the students' projects. Instead, all students are submitting their projects digitally, and you, our judges, will have access to view and evaluate them through the virtual contest website where you applied to be a judge. And we'll dive into that process a little bit later tonight. Um, so we are going to go through the steps of logging in, filling out an evaluation form, and then submitting rankings this evening so you have a taste of what to expect. Uh, so before I start with all of that, I do want to give an update on the status of student interviews. Uh, in the past, uh, judges met with students at one site and talked to the students about their projects in short interview segments. Um, this year, based on guidelines from the national office, virtual student interviews will not be held at any level of the competition. Um, we know this is a component that many of you look forward to uh, if you've judged in the past. Um, but due to student security and privacy issues, the and the logistics of man managing virtual student interviews, um, it will not be possible this year. Uh, even without that component, I am so grateful uh, that we can continue as a virtual contest with help from all of you. So the virtual contest, oops, went too far. Um, the virtual contest is divided into two distinct components of judging. Uh, the first round of judging and the second round of judging uh, and the third round of judging for some category. By now, um, you have received your judging schedule by category and date. Um, and just as a sheet, cheat sheet, I will be sending out a single PDF with all the dates uh, that you'll see in the next two slides uh, tomorrow when I send out the link for this webinar as well. Um, so you'll have them all in one place. Uh, the rounds are based on the number of entries per category. Um, this year of the five categories, four of them will have two rounds of judging and the fifth, uh, the paper category, will have three rounds of judging. So let's talk a little bit about your roles depending on your round um, and you will again know which round you're in. So round one judges, uh, you get the first take at all of our student projects. You're going to fill out what looks like a survey, um, which is our student evaluation and we'll dive into what that looks like in a little bit. Um, and all of your projects will be available to view on your judge portal beginning this Friday, February 12th. You will each fill out these forms on your own uh, before your round one meeting on Zoom on the dates listed here. Um, so if you are a document, documentary and performance judge in round one, you'll be joining us again on Tuesday, February 23rd. Uh, if you are a papers judge, you will be joining us again on Wednesday, March 3rd. And if you are a website, you will be joining us on Thursday, March 4th. And exhibits round one will be joining us on March 8th on Sunday. Um, by the end of each of those nights in all the categories, uh, the person designated as the captain for each individual team will take the consensus of the first, second, and third place projects and type those right into the system. Uh, and then for the other remaining projects, you will be assigned between four to six projects, depending on the category. 
Um, so anything that's left that is not ranked one, two, three, you will just put in 99. Um, I know it sounds a little strange to rank it as 99, uh, but that's so our virtual system can uh, filter out much quicker uh, which projects will move on to another round. Uh, and then after that, your work is done. So uh, remember that students will be able to see all of the bubbles and comments that you fill in. Uh, and we're gonna look at what that looks like a little bit later when we get into the judge portal. Um, but for your steps, you're going to view the projects, fill out the evaluation forms, and then meet with us on your designated nights to fill out the rankings. Two. Round two judges. You are very similar. Uh, you get to read the students' work fresh. You are a new set of judges looking at the same projects that it had advanced from uh, round one. So we'll take the top projects from round one into round two. Uh, and so those new judge teams will be able to see them with fresh eyes. So if you're in round two, your job is to whittle down those entries that you have received to the first, second, and third place projects. And those will be the first, second, and third place projects for the whole category and division. And again, any other project that is not one, two, three will be ranked with that 99. Different in round two for round two judges, you will not be filling out any bubbles or student evaluations, uh, and you will only be discussing with your fellow judges and simply ranking the projects. Based on how the national competition is set up, since round one judges have already filled out the evaluations, round two judges really need to hone in on the rank and you serve as that second set of eyes to confirm those category winners of the best of the best from round one. So you will also not be able to see the comments uh, and evaluation forms from your previous judge teams in round one. You'll get unbiased, fresh set of eyes on those. Um, prior to your judging nights, which are listed here on screen, you can make your own notes and your own ideas about the merits of each project. And then on the Zoom nights, meet with your judge team and deliberate. Very similarly to round one, you'll chat with your judge team and then submit your judge captain will submit those rankings. You will notice uh, that each category here on round two has different days when they can see their judge projects. This is because round two judges can only view their projects after round one has finished their deliberations and submitted their rankings. Uh, I will send an email out to the teams in round two when you can log into your judge portal and view those projects. So you'll get a notification for me on these dates here. So um, round two, you will meet on, if you're in documentaries, you'll meet on March 2nd. Uh, papers, you will meet on March 16th. Uh, what, uh, excuse me, websites, you'll meet on March 11th and exhibits, you'll meet on March 15th. Um, so look for an email notifying me about your when your projects are available. Round three uh, really only applies to one category here, uh, and that's the paper category. And it's going to act very similarly to round two. Um, this will be a fresh judge team to view the entries. Uh, the judge team will discuss and then rank them as before without filling in the evaluation forms. Uh, and they will be meeting on March 22nd. So what to expect on those judging nights? Those were a lot of dates and I know you each I'm sure honed in on the one that you will be at, uh, but what to expect on all of those. Uh, you will be joining myself and Olivia on Zoom again, and then your judge team will be divided up into different breakout rooms within those judge groups um, to discuss your student projects. You will have 90 minutes to, to do this, uh, which is about, we've broken it down to 10 minutes to, dis to discuss each project and then using the remaining time to deliberate the rankings of that project. Olivia and I will be available to answer any questions you have during those nights. You should all log on to your judge portals on that night so you can view the projects uh, and then input the rankings that night as well. Round one judges, again, uh, your evaluation forms should be completed before meeting with your judge teams on those nights. Uh, so once your team reaches consensus, judge captain, you will input the top three projects and then that will be what to expect on those judging nights. So 
I've just thrown a lot of information about NHD, judging nights, and different uh, components of the process. So I want to pause here uh, and check in to, to see if there's any questions um, and see if Olivia has any in the chat or uh, if anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask any questions here. Just a couple. Um, oh. This is Paula Young, and we have received nothing. Paula, I will go ahead and take a look and make sure that. Um, okay. Just to say, we have had nothing through the mail. Yeah, I can definitely um, double check that and make sure it confirm email addresses with you offline, but we'll make sure that we get Paula, your information. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So um, just a question, Karina, um, to say, uh, please clarify if we are submitting our scores and rankings for round one before we meet for the Zoom group. Great question. Um, no, you will not be submitting your rankings uh, before that Zoom meeting. You will be doing them on the Zoom call with your judge team. Uh, so the only thing is that you have to do before that round or before that um, round one judge session will be to just fill out the evaluations. The rankings will be decided when you chat with your team members. Great question. Great, and another question from Sarah asking if um, they're going to be told before if they're gonna be judging junior or senior projects. Again, great question. Uh, when you log on to your judge portal on um, Friday, if you're a round one judge, you'll be able to see if you are a junior or senior judge then. If not, I can send that out too, but that is when you will see it. And that will also answer um, Hillary's next question. When will we be given access to the judge portal and to evaluate the projects? Yeah, so, so you already have access to the judge portal um, with the login that you use to um, submit your registration, uh, but your projects will show up starting on Friday morning, February 12th. That's when you'll be able to first access them if you're judging for round one. Uh, Olivia just answered my question is where you get your uh, username and password for the portal. That was what we registered with? Yes, yes so it'll exactly. be what you registered with. So it'll be the one you set up. So I think it assigns you a username and then whatever password you set on that. And if anyone has any issues logging in, uh, please email me and we can reset some passwords on our end uh, to help get you into the judge portal. Thank you. Um, Douglas asks, can we see other judges evaluations before we meet? That's a great question, Doug. Yes, in your judge team, uh, you will be able to see your team members' other evaluations. Yes. And I know Karina will show us a little bit of that when, um, when we go over the actual portal. Um, and, and she'll be able to show us exactly kind of where to see those other evaluations. Um, I see Jillian has raised her hand. Jillian, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes, thanks. Um, so my question is about the papers. So how many, so three go from round one into round two, and then round two, do we just, decide, you know, confirm or change the ranking of the three that are there? And then Great question. Um, so I'm going to back up just a second to answer that. So each judge category has a couple different teams. So in a round one, if there's five or six teams judging papers, for example, the top one project from each of those teams will be sent to the second round. Um, so it'll be the top one project from six different teams that'll be sent to round two. So it'll be the, the number ones of all around. So then just to elaborate had, like, six papers that were all number one or whatever, and then we decide one to three or something. Correct. Right. Okay, great. Thanks. I was just kind of, I didn't know quite how many we would be looking at. So. Each judge team will be given anywhere between four to seven entries um, projects, regardless of which round you are judging. So everyone will be getting um, the same, roughly the same number of student projects um, to look at whether or not you are or aren't filling out evaluation forms. This is Jack Young. In the past, uh, there have always been technical issues that happen from, for whatever reason. There's always something that's not the right format. It's, uh, the, there's questions anyway. Is there going to be someone 
who is designated, or one of you uh, will be designated as the technical support, if you will, for the organization? Yes. Um, so any technical related issues, whether it's on the judging night or before or after, um, can come through me uh, through that history day at mercermuseum.org email. Uh, so any questions you have, I'll have that email up at the end of the presentation here. Um, but any technical issues, I know we know that uh, there can be some technical things that arise and we, we do our best to, to field those. But yes, those can all come through me. I've also just put that email address in the chat for anyone who wants to. Um, I think that's all the questions from the chat for now, Karina, if you want to keep going. All right, we are going to dive into accessing the portal now. So I'm going to switch screens here to the judge portal. So this should look a little familiar from when you uh, registered to be a National History Day judge. Um, so it's the same place, uh, but instead of creating an account here, uh, you're going to come up here to the login. Uh, and as we were saying earlier, it's going to be the login information that you created during your um, registration. So I'm going to log us in under a test judge here so I can show you what the judge portal looks like. So one moment as I type in our username and our password, and then we're just going to go here to click the login button. All right, so once you log in, you'll be taken to your judge homepage. Uh, and right on this main page here, uh, we have some helpful links uh, and information for you posted. Uh, this is where any big news will happen. You'll see we have our judge training webinar um, date posted here. So you're already here, so that's great. And below that, we have some links to some helpful resources. Uh, this. Uh, the big ones that I want to point out to you tonight uh, are the 2021 theme narrative here. Uh, this is something that National History Day published uh, about the theme. Uh, so it takes you through different examples of the theme and how students can engage with the theme. Uh, communication in history, the key to understanding. Uh, and then the lastly down here at the bottom, we do have the contest rulebook linked. And so if you click it, it will pop open a PDF of the contest rulebook. Uh, and if you've judged with us in the past, uh, this rulebook has been updated uh, for the 2020-2021 year. Um, so there have been some changes. Uh, and NHD so very kindly laid out a summary of significant rule changes uh, so that you uh, can spot the bigger ones at a glance. Um, so I highly recommend that both new and returning judges take a look at this rule book uh, and the summary of significant rule changes. Uh, we'll talk about specific rules a little bit later on, uh, and I will be sending all of you tomorrow, uh, in addition to the link and that cheat sheet of uh, dates, uh, an abbreviated version of rules per category. Um, so that way you will have what we sent students for rules uh, to adhere to for the five different categories. Um, so that is our homepage. That is where we have some very helpful information. Uh, but to, act, to get into judging the projects, you're going to come up to the main toolbar right at the top of the page, and you're going to want to look for the judging drop down menu here. So to get to uh, the judge portal, you'll click the judging drop down menu on the toolbar, and you will click judge portal. And the judge portal is going to open up a new browser tab uh, where you will have all of your information for um, judging your projects. Uh, so this is where you will see your projects, you will uh, evaluate them, fill out those evaluation forms if you are a round one judge, and submit your rankings uh, at the end of the evening. So at the top of the page, we'll start right at the top here, you will see the list of judges that are on your team, uh, as well as some contact information for them. The judge that is listed at number one will always be the judge captain. Uh, so if you uh, don't remember your judge captain or need reference, uh, if you are in the number one position, you are the judge captain. 
down below the judge groups, uh, you have your judge assignments. Uh, you will see that this group just has three assignments, uh, three student projects assigned to them, where you will be able to view and evaluate them. Um, so I'll just notice, point out a few things uh, to uh, here. So the main one you're going to look for to start right now, we're going to go to this view and evaluate button. Uh, it'll be next to the, uh, the project title here. So once we click that, that's going to open up another new browser window that has access to the student project. Now, up at the top of this new browser window, when we click to view and evaluate, we'll see some links to the student projects. Uh, depending on the category, there could be one or two links to click here. Uh, if all of their materials can be put into one uh, PDF document, it's, it'll just show one category here. So papers and exhibits are all only going to have this option here. If you're in documentaries or performances, you will uh, have a second link to click, which will take you to the video file uh, of that documentary or performance. Uh, so that'll look different for each category. So if I click the view written materials, that is going to open up in a PDF, uh, the process paper and annotated bibliography and any other required written materials for that particular project. Uh, so we ask that all of our judges read through this to get a sense of the project uh, as it is part of the process for students and judges to read and evaluate uh, the annotated bibliography and the process paper. So when you're done reading through the process paper and annotated bibliography and any other written materials associated with that project, you can go ahead and just close out of that new browser window that was opened uh, and that'll take you back to that view and evaluate page. So if you have a documentary film or a uh, performance recording to watch as well, you'll just simply open the link to a video. Um, all, the doc all the videos uh, are shared by the students and they will pop up here. And all you will have to do is push play. Um, and that'll play the 10 minute video. Uh, and when you're done again, you can go ahead and close out of that browser tab. So once you have viewed all components of your project, uh, it is time, if you are round one, to fill in your evaluation forms. Uh, and they will always be underneath those links at the top. So you never have to go far to find the evaluation form associated with that project. So underneath, uh, we have some bubbles that will need to be filled in uh, on a rubric scale here uh, for superior, excellent, good, fair, and not evident. Um, in two different categories or two different um, criteria, which is uh, the first is historical quality and the second is clarity of presentation. And we're going to talk about what those mean uh, and what that means for each project in a little bit. Underneath the bubbles for the rubric, you have the rules compliance section. And this is where you're just simply going to check yes or no for each of the listed category rules. Uh, each of these rules is uh, uh, customized, excuse me, to each category. Um, so it might look a little different depending on what category you're in. Um, obviously, uh, the 10 minute time limit will not apply to exhibits, but it will apply to documentaries and performances. Uh, if you select no for any of these, a box will pop up to um, ask you to explain why you said no. So you're going to need to give a little more information about why uh, this project did not comply with one or more of these rules. So I'm going to uncheck these. There we go. Underneath, we'll come back to the comment boxes and what's inside them in a little bit. Uh, but you have two comment boxes to fill in. Uh, the first one is for strengths and areas for improvement. And the second is for general comments. Each of these boxes uh, has a 300 character minimum. Uh, so you are required to put 300 characters in this box, then the strengths and areas for improvement box, and 300, a minimum of 300 characters in the general comments box. And these are boxes that students will see. Students will see any of your comments put into either of these two boxes. A third box is down below for your personal notes, any notes that you want to take while looking at the uh, 
the project that you want to bring up during your deliberation judge nights um, or any things you want to remember for future conversations can go here. Uh, as a note, students will not see these notes in this box. Um, so anything that you type here uh, is only for your eyes. Uh, so if you're typing comments in here, make sure they're being put up in either of these two boxes up above. Once you have fully completed your evaluation form, you can save and submit to them. Uh, you have two buttons at the bottom you will see here. The save button will save uh, an in-progress evaluation and you can come back to that at any time. When you are completely finished with it and ready for other people to see it, you will click save and submit. That sends it into the system and lets your fellow judge team um, members see your evaluation um, and be able to discuss them further. So when you're completely done and ready for everyone to view it, um, so that's including your judge team uh, and uh, Olivia and myself will be able to see them as well once you click save and submit. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that right now. Oops, I'm breaking, I'm gonna undo those. That way I can save and submit it. And a window is gonna pop up asking me if I am ready to submit uh, the evaluation and I'm going to want to click yes or okay that I am ready to submit it. After that, you will get a green bar at the top here that confirms that the evaluation has been saved and submitted and you can go ahead and then click off of the screen by closing that browser tab up at the top of the page. So when we come back to our judge a portal, you'll notice that I had clicked the view and evaluate button for I, uh, test judge one, which is who I am right here. And at the beginning, it was an in progress uh, evaluation. If I go ahead and refresh that page, you'll see that it says it's finished and we have completed that task. Uh, I do want to point out just a few other things that you can see here. Uh, so to see your other team members, uh, evaluation forms, you're just going to click this blue eye view button uh, to be able to see what they've written. You will not be able to edit anything your other judge team members write, um, but you can view them. The brown flag here indicates that this judge uh, said no on one of the rules compliance section. It indicated that that uh, project did not follow one or more of the rules. We do ask that if one judge flags it, that you have a conversation about it uh, and come to a consensus about it. We do want to give students uh, consistent feedback. Uh, so we would like to see if one flag is here, we would like to see that the second judge or third judge also flags that rules violation as well. Uh, great. So now that we've talked through this port, I am going to pause for a minute to see if there's any questions before we dive into the content of uh, co judge comments. I have, a, I have a question. Yeah. So hi, I'm Samantha, but I was just wondering, so we have to submit our like evaluation before that Zoom judging session. Correct. Okay. Yes. So just to clarify, Samantha, for that question is you will submit your judging um, evaluation before that Zoom meeting. However, if there are any chain, last minute changes that you need to make um, after deliberating with your uh, fellow team members, like you want to go back and maybe change one from excellent to superior or something like that, you can do that up until the end of your judge Zoom night. And then when you finally submit the rankings all together, that's when it'll close. Okay, cool. Great. And just remember, if you do make any changes to click that save and submit button again, um, and I'll go through what the final submission rankings is, but I wanted to pause right here for a minute because I saw some questions coming through. Great. Um, Karina, so Kathy wants to know, can we continue to edit the evaluation after we have clicked save and submit? You can uh, up until your judge captain submits the rankings. So once your judge captain submits the rankings, you can no longer make edits to your evaluation forms. Um, so make sure that your whole team is in agreement before uh, you your captain goes ahead and submits those rankings uh, because you will not be able to make changes after that. And Great Kathy, question. you can save and submit as many times as you want. So even after the first time that you submit it, 
Um, you can go back as long as you hit save and submit again, it'll save over the original one. Um, John is asking about the special awards nominations button. Great question, John. Um, we are offering as the uh, regional contest, we are offering two special awards uh, to student projects. Uh, the first is the Kevin McCoy Award for African American History. Uh, and the second is the Pennsylvania State Award. However, uh, the way we have set up our special awards, all of judges tonight in round one, two, or three do not have to worry about this button here. So um, we do just ask that you pretend that that button is not there. Um, there is no action required on any of our judges uh, to uh, use this button. So great question. Um, and it will only show up for the judge captains. So if you wonder why you don't see it and you're not a judge captain, that is why uh, it is only there for the judge captains. Uh, be, but we are not asking any of our judge captains uh, to do anything with that button. Great question. Great. Marie is wondering, what if we can't come to an agreement with the other judges on the projects we are evaluating? Great question, Marie. Uh, so we do uh, open it up for a lot of conversation on those nights. Uh, to come to agreement. We do understand that your evaluation forms are not going to match and we don't want them to. We don't want uh, exact replicas of evaluation forms from each of our judges. We don't want students getting uh, three evaluation forms that all say the exact same thing. We do want them to learn and grow. Um, so we do ask that they're in the same ballpark. So if one thinks it's superior all around. We don't want one of your team members also to uh, say that it needs needs a lot of work. Um, and looking at the projects, that should be fairly obvious. But if your debate is between if it's a good or fair bubble on your evaluation, that's fine if there's some inconsistency there. Um, if you are having some difficulties agreeing about the rankings of the top three projects, um, that is something that Olivia and I are there for on your judging nights. Um, we can uh, look at what you kind of talk through, where you're getting stuck on, what's being hung up on, uh, maybe what's causing uh, some, uh, uh, some, I don't want to say conflict feels like a strong word, but some disagreement about um, which project should be number one or number two. Um, and that's where our rule book really is going to come in handy, uh, looking at which project really hit all of the all of the marks in the rule book um, and maybe which one maybe went over on a word count somewhere here and there or maybe just didn't quite follow some of all the rules. Um, so we'll be there to help field all of those questions that you have about that. Um, but those are some of the tactics we use to look at um, when there's diff disagreements about rankings. I will say that I have seen many a heated debate in my time um, doing NHD of uh, passionate judges about their projects. And that's what's so fun about the deliberation process as well. Mm -hmm. um, Karina Robert wants to know, have the second round judges been notified? Yes, the second round judges have been notified. So all judges um, should know their assignments. And if you have not, I know a few people have notified us tonight. Um, and so I will follow up with all of you. Um, but yes, our round two have been notified that they are round two and have those dates. All right, no more questions coming in this way, Karina. So I think we can move on. Unless Great, I'm, I'm gonna show real quick how we uh, how our judge captains will submit at the end of the night. Uh, it's a very simple process, no stress at all. Um, so you're gonna click this button here that says submit rankings. Uh, and because all of my evaluations are finished, I can go ahead and do that tonight. Um, so you will see numbers here uh, indicating which project is which. However, the way our system is set up right now virtually because we are uh, haven't quite assigned all of our real projects yet, these numbers aren't here. So I promise there will be numbers here. It will not be blank. You will not have to guess. Uh, but you'll go ahead and just input the numbers. One, two, and I'll do a 99. Uh, so this will be if you don't have, uh, if you have four projects, um, we do ask that you rank the first three projects, but any other project you have after that, we ask that you rank it as 99. So once you have that, you can go ahead and click submit rankings again. It'll ask if you are sure and you are going to say yes if you are sure. If you are not sure or need to change something, this is your last chance to do so. Um, so make sure you are uh, making sure that those are the correct rankings. You'll click OK. And then there's one more step. 
you have to submit to NHD. And that is to us, that is to Olivia and myself uh, as the regional coordinators. That means that it notifies the system um, that you have completely finished and it's submitting the evaluation forms to us as well as your rankings. Um, so you're gonna want to click this button as well. You'll submit to NHD. It's gonna ask you if you're sure again, and then it will tell, ask if, uh, tell you that it will lock the room, which simply means that no judges can then go back and change any of their evaluations. Um, so you're gonna wanna click okay. And that is it. And you'll see that um, you, the buttons to view and evaluate have been removed. Uh, and you have this uh, message that tells you that the room has been locked. We can still, however, view the evaluations. Uh, so I do just want to take a second to glance at some of these evaluations here. Uh, let's pull up this one here. So we pulled this one because it was a good uh, evaluation form. Um, the bubbles are consistent and uh, all over the place, but I'm gonna really come down to the comments. Um, there's lots of positive reinforcement and feedback, um, but the criticisms are also uh, phrased in a constructive way. Uh, when offering critique of the present project, uh, you should try to give the students real examples of what you're seeing um, in need of improvement. Uh, the comments and the rubric uh, bubbles up here match each other. One uh, doesn't tell you that everything was all superior, but then the comments tell you you need a lot of work. Uh, we do like it uh, to match. In the general comments, we see that there's quite a few comments about the students' participation. Um, we do add, like when um, judges thank the, the students for their project. They have worked so hard on these, so it's always nice to acknowledge their uh, participation. So let's take a look at one that's not so great. I'm going to pull up this one here. So looking at this rubric, we see that this judge thought that this project was superior and deserved all check marks in the superior column. Um, though it is rare to see a project that has all top marks, uh, even if that is the case, we do want to include some comments for something to improve. Uh, give the, we want these students to work hard on these projects and uh, they, they do, uh, it'll be useful for them to have some feedback. Um, we do ask that you do not put the ranking of that project anywhere on the judge evaluation forms. Students get these back um, and it's just not appropriate to turn them back in uh, with their rankings, even if they do win, because if there's a chance that you're around one judge and in round two, this project gets placed at third place, um, this comment will not make sense to that student. Um, the second thing uh, to look at is just the comments. They are just compliments and uh, doesn't give the student really any actionable items to improve upon. Uh, so they aren't very well thought out comments um, and they are not constructive um, and aren't really helpful to the students. And you'll notice that they are also not at the word count or at the character limit. There is not many characters here at all. Um, so we want to make sure we're hitting that character minimum each time. There's plenty of space and we know uh, you all have lots to say about these projects. Um, so make sure you go ahead and use that space. All right. I'm going to return us back to the PowerPoint to cover just a few more things about comments um, and then we can take some questions at the end. So we're going to look at what makes a good evaluation. Uh, so to begin, um, so our goal is to encourage these students to keep learning and growing and we can do this through constructive comments and feedback um, and providing them this welcome, uh, if not uh, virtual environment uh, to present their research. Uh, your role is to examine the student projects and evaluate them based on that evaluation form um, and uh, that has that specific criteria and tying it to the annual theme. So as a judge, you'll see that uh, on the rubric, there was broken down into, into two sections of bubbles. Uh, and if you've judged with us in the past, you'll notice that there's been a slight change. Uh, the national office worked with teachers and coordinators to develop new evaluation forms for this year um, to better serve students uh, and their projects as a whole. So you'll notice there are two categories here. 
historical quality, which will make up 80% of the student's evaluation. Uh, and historical quality deals with uh, the, uh, the, the process of which the students go through. It's how well are they making their case? Are they making a case? And uh, what sources are they using to do so? The clarity of presentation section is about the construction of the project. It's about um, the mechanics, the grammar, um, and the use of equipment within those projects. Uh, so it is ranked at a smaller percentage um, because we really do want to focus on the students' historical argument and presentation of their information instead of how glitzy or pretty that presentation is. Um, so just to sum up a little bit about what makes good comments, uh, these tips are helpful for also thinking about the project and how to rank them if you're in a round two or three judge. Uh, we know only round one is filling out all of those bubbles, uh, but it is helpful to understand uh, the criteria for which these projects are being judged and how you as a round two or three judge can think about these projects um, in these ways. Um, so we saw some examples earlier, but I do want to bring up some key points uh, that your comments should be an explanation of the bubbles that you filled in. You want to tell students why that aspect of their project was fair or superior um, with specific examples of how to improve. Even if students don't advance to the next level of competition, if you provide them with examples and actionable steps for the next time, they will grow as young historians and researchers. A helpful tactic can be to ask questions in your comments, such as, why did the Apollo moon landing revolutionize space research and communication? Or how do you think carrier pigeons influenced the outcome of the war? Questions can get the students thinking about their projects from a different perspective, or perhaps in a way they hadn't before. So I also want everyone to remember uh, that each project has redeemable qualities. Try to sandwich uh, constructive criticism between compliments. These students worked very hard on these projects um, in some extraordinary times. And so we definitely want to give credit to uh, the work that they have put into these projects. Uh, we have a little uh, infograph here uh, that you might find helpful when thinking about your evaluation forms. So this is mostly for our round one judges. Uh, so it's a breakdown of turning thoughts into constructive comments. Some ex examples you'll see are instead of saying, this project needs a lot of work, you can say, you're off to a good start, but consider strengthening your project by doing X, Y, or Z. Instead of saying, the documentary sound quality was awful, you can say the poor audio quality of your documentary distracted from the overall project. Consider testing your audio on different systems or with different settings ahead of time. This is just to give you an idea of how to word constructive comments so students can learn from them. That is our ultimate goal, that students learn from their projects. So a uh, little bit about the rules. Uh, NHD has rules for every entry uh, and specific rules for every category. You saw on the judge portal that you have access to the contest rulebook. And as I said, I will be sending out abbreviated cheat sheet rules for each category to you. Uh, and those are what students uh, got received as well to build their projects. Um, so it'll be the same thing, so you'll know what to look for. I do highly recommend that both new and returning judges uh, read the rules that we send out. Uh, as I said, NHD has updated rules for this year, um, so it's, uh, but it's always good to refresh. Um, and as we talked about a little bit ago, many of these projects will be so close in your judging and in your deliberation process um, that the rules will be helpful in trying to determine which project should be ranked above another. So speaking of ranking uh, and the deliberation process, you may have questions about infractions or disqualifications. This table is helpful for deciphering what counts as a minor infraction, a major infraction, or cause for disqualification. Both minor and major infractions should be noted in the comments of your judge evaluation forms, and minor infractions should not prevent a project from advancing, but can be considered when looking to break a tie. So again, going back to that idea of which project should be ranked above another, you're going to want to look at your minor infractions. Major infractions should not advance to the next level um, and should not rank uh, one, two, or three. Uh, 
only three very specific uh, reasons uh, are for disqualification. And those are uh, plagiarism, reusing an entry or part of an entry from a previous year, or tampering with another student's entry. We know it's a little bit harder this year uh, about the tampering with another student's entry. They're not physically near each other. Um, so we know that that one is there as well, uh, but just in case, and it's harder to see. Um, something to note, no entries are disqualified on the spot by the judges. Any questions where you uh, might have concern of an entry uh, broke one of these rules or uh, these offenses should be reported to Olivia or I. Um, and we'll be the ones to investigate and take action. Uh, disqualification is hard to prove, uh, but we do want to do everything possible to make this competition fair for all students. Um, so if you see any of these or you have questions about um, plagiarism or perhaps reusing an entry, please contact us um, if you see that. As we end this evening, uh, I want to quickly debunk a few National History Day myths uh, that have become pretty common. Uh, these relate to some specific categories. For exhibit and website judges, uh, we do want you to remember uh, that timelines are not required. A lot of students will put them in, uh, but they are not required. Uh, performances, uh, performance judges should also remember that songs are not required. You can have a performance that isn't a musical, uh, so it doesn't have to sing or have music. Um, in documentaries, uh, student conducted interviews or oral history interviews um, can be included, uh, but they are not necessary as well for the, the project to do well. You can have them, but it is not required. Um, for all judges, uh, I just wanna remind everyone that, uh, that glitz does not win. If a project is beautiful and catches your eye, that's great. Um, but it is not the be all and end all of the presentation. As we saw earlier on the rubric, the uh, historical quality comes above that clarity of presentation. Um, and each project comes in different shapes and sizes. Uh, so we do ask that everyone keeps an open mind uh, to consider each project with a fresh eye. So that was a whole bunch of information in a very small amount of time. Uh, and I definitely want to leave time for questions. Um, so again, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. I know Olivia is uh, manning and keeping an eye on that. Um, or feel free to unmute yourselves and we can answer any questions that you have. Karina, Hillary was wondering for exhibits, will judges be given the measurements? Yes, um, you will be given the measurements for exhibits. Uh, and I will say that exhibits this year, as I mentioned earlier, were a little bit harder to translate into the virtual realm, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, exhibits are normally, if you think of a trifold board of a science fair-esque pro uh, project, um, they did not necessarily have to be those trifold boards, but it was a three-dimensional, um, museum exhibit type uh, project and uh, we those do have dimensions but this year they are also submitting virtual exhibits as well which can be designed on the computer uh, in Microsoft Publisher or Google Drawings as well so you they could have made a physical exhibit and taken pictures of it or designed a fully digital exhibit and presented that as a PDF so if you are an uh, exhibits judge, you'll see two different types of exhibits. Uh, and yes, they do all have measurements requirements that we uh, do include on those uh, rules that we'll be sending out tomorrow. Your cheat sheets will have all of that information for you. Didn't want to overwhelm you too early. Uh, Karina, Matt wants to know if we're still looking for judges. Thank you, Matt. Uh, we are actually really good on judges this year. Um, we have had an overwhelming amount of support uh, from people uh, in the Doylestown, Bucks County, Montgomery County regions, as well as all over the state and country. Uh, being a virtual contest meant that we could tap into uh, people from across the country. So we are so grateful that uh, we can do that. So thank you, Matt. Um, but we are set on judges this year. Any other questions? Um, I don't see any others coming in through the chat, but folks, if you have any and you'd like to um, unmute yourselves, feel free. All right. Well, they may come to you later or when you're judging. Um, 
I will just uh, pop in to say uh, a special thank you to all of you for joining us tonight. Um, it was wonderful to have uh, over 60 judges on this call. Um, and we are really happy that you are all volunteering your time to uh, be part of this meaningful project. Uh, as uh, uh, Jack and Paula asked, if you have any technical needs, technical difficulties, uh, Karina and I can both be reached at the history day um, at mercermuseum.org email address. So you can always email us or give a call to the number um, down on the screen right now uh, for Karina's line, or you can always ask for me, Olivia Brown as well. And as a reminder, I will be sending this out tomorrow. So should you wanna go back and review anything um, and for our judges who are not able to join us tonight, uh, we will be sending this out to you as well with that cheat sheet of rules per category um, and a list of all of the judging dates just in one place. So you have that. So keep an eye out for an email from uh, that history day email. And I will be following up with those of you who still needed uh, some uh, contact about your judging category. So keep an eye out for Mia. You'll be hearing from me tomorrow. And projects will be accessible for round one judges to check out by Friday. Thank right. you so Thank much, you everybody. Have a good night. We'll see everybody virtually soon. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Actually, I have a comment more than a question. Yeah. Um, this is just kind of silly, but I'm, um, since I'm judging for a number of different contests in different states, mm -hmm. um, I notice your emails only say like history day on them. <laughs> is it possible to make the username say like Buxmont history day or something just to... uh, you're saying like our, our handle there is just history yeah. day. It just I... up in my email is history day. And I don't want to get mixed up amongst the like several contests I'm involved in. Right, we know that there's lots of people judging different histories. I can, I don't know have the answer to that question right now. I can check with our um, IT who sets up all of those emails to see if that's something we can change. I'm not entirely sure though, um, but I always try to put in the subject lines um, as big and bold as possible that it's Buxmont. Um, so I'll make sure that I uh, make a point to do that as well for Thank uh, you. all subject lines. I know in the spring I was getting very mixed up because I was judging for like six or seven different contests. So I don't want to do that again this fall. No, we definitely don't want that. We'll make sure that we uh, say in the subject line very clearly if we can't change that handle. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for this. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody.